Hi, I'm Andrew with Flare, and I'm excited to introduce you to the new gold standard at Flare Espresso, the Flare 58. The Flare 58 improves upon our current lineup with the introduction of standard 58 millimeter portafilter, retractable piston for fast back-to-back -back workflow, an elongated lever, and a T-grip handle for more leverage and better comfort. But we're most excited to offer you hands-off preheating. When you receive your Flare 58, you will receive it in two parts, lever assembly and the base, which attach with two bolts from below. And you can see all that information right in here. The Flare 58, like other models, can be used without electricity. So there is a preheat cap that's included with the system. But today we're gonna to brew with electricity. So the first step is going to be to put the brew head on the base. So we'll go ahead and remove our piston. We're gonna slide this in with the pigtail out at three o'clock and we're gonna give it a little rotation and you'll hear it click and you can feel that it grabs there. Once you have that in place, you can go ahead and grab your temperature controller and you can connect this. We're going to assemble the electrical parts from the brew head to the wall. So we're gonna start by plugging this in. It's a four pin connector and it has a key and slot. So you're going to look for the slot in the key and push it in together like this. Once you connect the two parts, you're just going to thread that on. So you lock it together with the nut and then you're gonna take the other side and you're gonna connect it to your power supply. When you connect it, you're going to hear the power supply give you an audible beep that tells you that you have electricity to the system at this point. You're not gonna see any lights come on. That's only gonna happen when we finally go to preheat. Let's start by getting your water boiling and preheating your 58. So you have low, medium, and high temperature settings, and that roughly correlates to the coffee you're going to use. So for instance, you're going to do a dark roast, you're gonna want low, a medium roast, medium, and a light roast, choose high. So today we're gonna to be brewing with a medium roast. So we're gonna press and hold it for two seconds to turn it on to low, and we're gonna press real quick for a second light. It's gonna to continue to blink until we get to our temperature. Now this usually takes somewhere about three minutes, but that more depends on your ambient temperature where you are. And we would recommend that you go ahead and let it heat for about 10 minutes because we want all of this brew head and brew group to go ahead and heat up to the temperature, not just the cylinder. So we're gonna go ahead and put on the stem and we're gonna lock in the portafilter. We're gonna go ahead and let this preheat for about 10 minutes just so we know that everything's nice and hot and ready to go and we can stabilize our temperature. So today I'm going to brew with 18 grams of coffee in and I'm gonna pull a shot to about 36 out. So that's a one to two brew ratio. All right, so we're gonna weigh out 18 grams. Let's get grinding. When it comes to what you need to make tasty espresso, you pretty much receive it all in the package. So you have a nice tamper that comes with it, and of course your press, portafilter, and baskets. But there might be other tools you want to add to your collection. I would suggest you first start and just make sure that you dial and master the system the way it is, and then start thinking about what other things you can get. The one thing that I would suggest sooner than later though is something like this. It's called a Weiss distribution tool. And the goal here is to help us settle the coffee in the portafilter when we go to uh, move it around before we tamp it. So you wanna make sure that you have a nice even level bed. This can help you. All the other tools are things that might be fun to add to your system later, but you really don't need to at this point. So just focus on a good level tamp and good distribution of your coffee. We also have some other things you can see here. These are filters, paper filters, as well as our Flare 58 puck screen. Now, we recommend you use these to prevent having to clean this more often than not. What's going to happen if you brew to weight that I'm going to do, as I told you earlier, a one to two brew ratio, I'm going to stop the shot at some point and I'm going to lift my lever. And when I lift the lever, I'm actually going to create a little bit of suction in the system and I'll pull up any water and coffee that is sitting right above the portafilter and it's gonna move through the dispersion screen. But if I use something like a paper filter or a puck screen, it will prevent that from happening and I can keep this cleaner longer. We'll talk about how to clean this up later, but again, I just wanna mention that we advocate using paper and puck screens. So we'll get our coffee over here. This has been preheating for, you know, maybe 10 minutes by now. So this should be nice and warm. It's not gonna to be too hot to the touch, but you can feel the warmth and the heat in that system. 
and we're gonna put our port filter here. At this point, you can just flip this over and make sure that you get all the coffee well and evenly distributed and pull this off slow. If you had a lot of coffee brimming to the top, it might spill over. If that's the case, that's where other things that come in handy, say like a funnel. But my uh, dose is going to be low enough that it's gonna set, I didn't have to worry about that. So as you can see, when I put it in, I have a little bit more coffee at what it looks like here at the top, a little bit less there. If I were to tamp this right now, I'm gonna have some density issues because I have more coffee in certain places and less in others. So that's where waste distribution tools like this come in handy. And again, we don't wanna dig through the coffee bed too much. We just kinda of wanna move and settle the coffee, let it naturally get to the places it needs to. We're not inserting this deep into the bed, just the top, just trying to get that pile to spread itself off. So now you can see I have a nice even bed to start with so that when I deliver the tamp, it's gonna be nice and level and again, no density issues. So we'll place it here on the edge of the table and we'll take our tamper. We're gonna lightly press it there just so it's in place. Now you can tamp this in many different ways. You can slide it under like this, you can press it. Um, I like finger tamps. Some ways to do that for me is I'll grab the bottom of these ears and I'll be pushing down as I'm pulling up. So it's kind of a squeezing action and I'm making sure that I'm getting a nice compression that I can replicate over and over again. I can also come back and push on this side and just make sure that it's level in all different directions. I'm also looking straight down to make sure that this is level. If it's sitting off in some angle or another, it means I'm sloping my bed of coffee and the water is gonna most likely run into one side or the other wherever it's easiest to go. When that is well leveled and straight, I can pull that out and you can see you have a nice level tamp bed. This is where I'm gonna go ahead and use a puck screen, the Flare 58 puck screen. However, it is important to remember that this is going to also be something that's at the ambient temperature. So one way that I could preheat that is place that right over here on my vents, or I can sit and pour a little bit of water on that before I insert it. And I make sure that I have good heat in here as well as all the other materials. All right, well, let's get ready to brew now. So this is nice and preheated. We're gonna put that onto the portafilter. When it goes to locking it in, you bring it in at six o'clock. Make sure it's nice and level and flat. If it's like this or like this, it's not gonna lock in smooth. And then just rotate it towards about four o'clock and you'll feel when it's done and tight. So when that's ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up our hook, pull out the piston. We're gonna fill this all the way up to the water enters the well where this plugs into. That way we know we don't have any air in the system. We'll go ahead and slide our glass under here, turn it on, pop this in, turn it, hook it, and we're going to pull a shot and try to stay within the espresso zone. And we are again looking for about 36 grams out in about 36 seconds. So I get in about eight, nine bars, I think. And I'm just going to sit here and hold it, pull that shot. Because this is a lever machine, we do have the option to back off pressure just a little bit as we get closer to our yield. So as I get closer to my 36, I'm going to go ahead and slowly drop pressure a little bit and watch my scale to keep it just above five bar. So at this point, I'm going to raise the lever back to the start position. As you can see, that cuts off the flow, gives me an opportunity to come and swap out my glasses that I don't have more espresso coming in. So I'm gonna slide that down there. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish purging out any of the brew water we didn't use for that original shot. So not a lot of pressure. If you push too hard at this point, it could spray around you because it'll be creating channels. So just go ahead and allow pressure, but not too much and get to the bottom. And of course, the longer you allow this to drain out, the drier this is going to be for you. Um, I generally like to wait until I start to see the drops ceasing. At this point, I know you might not be able to hear it, but there's some air bubbles coming through and that tells me that I've pretty much pushed out all the water and it should be dry in there. So now I can go ahead and release and remove. And I wanna get a knock box. Now I wanna get my screen out of there. If you had paper filters, you might just kind of pry it out with the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and hopefully to tap that out just a little bit. There it goes, so the screen's out. Now I can go ahead and give it a nice little knock, nice and dry. All right, so let's talk about cleanup. 
If you're gonna brew another back-to-back -back shot real fast, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is clean and dry. It's not too difficult to actually get that material back out with just a paper towel or a, a rag like this. And then you can go ahead and brew for the next person. So again, the nice thing about the Flare 58 is you go ahead and you pull that back up, you prep this basket, lock it in, and you're ready to brew again. So that's easy to do. All right, so let's talk about cleanup on your brew head. Now, if you're using a puck screen, as I did, or paper filters, you won't have to do this that often. That's why we're highly recommending that you do, because really, once you have this set up, you don't wanna to have to take it off, put it on, that kind of thing. Um, but if you're not using a puck screen or paper filters, after a while of you lifting that lever with the portafilter locked in, you're going to pull material through that dispersion screen. This is standard with all espresso machines. At the time that you cut the pump, there's usually a backflow and it pulls back. So again, to prevent having to do that, we do recommend these things. So I don't always have to clean it up and I'm gonna suggest that you take this off, peek in. If you don't see any coffee material, you're good to go. Just keep brewing until you start to see some material build up. Now when the material builds up, what we're gonna to wanna to do is disassemble, disconnect our wires so that we can move this off the frame and over to a sink. So to start with, we're going to unplug it from the power supply first, and then we're going to go ahead and unscrew this nut and pull the four pin connectors apart. And there we go. And so now this is free to come off the frame. So again, it's just a little turn in this direction. You'll see that the tabs come into the clear and just lift up and lift out. So at this point, I can run this under water to just get the water out or the, uh, the material that's built up in there and dump it out. And that's generally all you're gonna need to do. Maybe again, week to week, depending on how much coffee material is starting to build up for you. Um, additionally though, when it comes to what kind of maintenance will you need to do with your 58, not much. You know, you'll see if there's any problems where there might be leaks from uh, water coming out of places where there's O-rings, but generally speaking, these O-rings should last you forever unless you nick them or damage them because they're not under pressure until you're actually brewing espresso and that's very few and far in between for the life of the product. But it's a lock and key. You can slide it in, turn it, and just wiggle this up and out. And when you do that, you have a more unfettered access to your cylinder. At this point, I can go and wipe this out, make sure that's nice and clean if I wanted to. Additionally, if you do want to get behind these O-rings where they're seated, the easy way to do that is just kind of push and pinch until you have sort of like a little nub there and you just pull it out. And you can do that on both of these. You can take a paper towel, wipe that through. And again, you won't have to do this probably once a month or even uh, fewer and far from that. But only if you start to see some material build up, we wouldn't recommend you use uh, cleaners unless it's something that is designed for espresso machines. Uh, generally speaking, if you leave any residues behind from a, a cleaner that isn't designed for this sort of application, it could start to you know, impart some flavors and tastes into your coffee. So again, you shouldn't have to remove these O-rings often, um, but if you do remove them to clean behind them, keep in mind when they go back in, they're gonna be dry and you might want to put a little bit of a light oil on that for lubrication, something that's tasteless, flavorless. Just rub it on, wipe it back off. That will make sure that when you put it back together here, that it will move smoothly in between. You can go ahead and mount your brew head again, pigtail out about three on the clock, rotate it in, and you can go ahead and put that back in. Now, we're going to put back together the temperature controller with the brew head, and again, we start from the brew head, and we work our way back to the power supply to the wall. Again, we're looking for the slot and the key. Line those up, push them together, and we'll go ahead and thread back on that secure nut. Then we can go ahead and plug this back into the power supply and we're ready to brew again. That's brewing with the Flare 58. If you wanna see what it's like to brew with one of our other models, select the corresponding thumbnail. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.